Okay, hello everybody, my name is Kusay Hassan, you can call me Q, and today what I'm going to be doing in this video is going over a problem that I was, um, that I had in one of my tutorial sessions uh, that I TA for, uh, which is Organic Chemistry 2, and that problem is basically assigning the uh, C13 NMR spectrum peaks to the correct carbons in, a mo in, a, uh, in this molecule here that's shown. So, the way I like to work through these problems is I like to work from the outside towards the in inwards because uh, usually in the middle of the spectrum, that's, those peaks are the hardest to assign, whereas the uh, outside of the spectrum is a lot more easier to uh, assign. So, uh, I like to narrow my options before I go down the middle. So, that's my preference. So, we're going to start with peak A. Peak A is right over here. It's the most deshielded uh, carbon, which means it has the least electron density around it. And so, what you want to notice here is in our um, molecule, we have two relatively electronegative atoms, right? We have the oxygen and we have the nitrogen. Um, and the oxygen is a lot more electronegative than the nitrogen because it's the second most electronegative um, atom in, or element in the periodic table, as well as it being an sp2 oxygen, right? So, um, that is. Uh, so basically, for that reason, um, I would assign carbon 8 to peak A because it's sitting right next to that electronegative oxygen. Sorry, before I do that, carbon 8 uh, is peak, uh, or peak, yeah, carbon 8 is assigned to peak A. Um, and I think B is going to be a little difficult. So I'm going to start from the other side. I'm going to start from I. So I is the most shielded carbon, and usually um, the rule is the, uh, the more protons are on the carbon, the more shielded it is, right? So let's look at all the CH3s that we have in the structure. We have one CH3 here, we have one CH3 here, and we have one CH3 here, right? Which is carbons 1, 3, and 9. Uh, now, in determining between them which one is the most shielded, carbon 9 is still next to this electronegative oxygen, so I wouldn't give it that assignment. Um, carbon 3 is right next to the nitrogen, whereas carbon 1 is one step away from the nitrogen and separated with the CH2. And so for that reason, what I would do is I would assign uh, peak I to carbon 1. Now let's go to peak H, which is the second most shielded atom, and I would assign that to carbon 9 because it is more... Um, it, it's not attached directly to the oxygen, right? Whereas this this CH3 is attached directly to the nitrogen, right? Um, this this carbon is actually, if you notice, is attached to this slightly positive carbon here, um, and so it actually won't lose a lot of electron density. And so for that reason, p um, peak H, I would give it to carbon nine. Now for peak G, I would go to carbon one or sorry, carbon 2, F, that's F, G is 3, yeah, no, sorry, for G, uh, sorry, I'm still getting used to this, uh, let me erase this, for peak G, I would go with carbon number 3, because that's the only CH3 left, right, um, so that's peak G, and then peak F is the next one, and that one is a little difficult, but if you look at it, there's um, between the rest of the carbons, most of them are on the, uh, actually all of them are on the benzene, right? We've assigned 1, 3, and 9. There's still carbon 2, which is a CH2, but the rest of the carbons, 4, 5, 6, and 7, are on the benzene, and they don't have any CH2s, right? Whereas carbon 2 does. So because carbon 2 is the only CH2, that will get P, that will be assigned to peak F. Now these four here are the toughest because these four peaks here represent carbons in the benzene. And so how do we solve that? Well, let me just actually erase the structure first and I'm gonna just redraw it using um, resonance structures to demonstrate how to assign these. Okay, so um, Basically, what you have is this structure here, right? And you have this carbonyl group, 
attach directly to it, and then you have this Amy, right? And you got that, right? So that's it, right? Now, what you have to figure out now is which electron group is electron withdrawing, or, or which uh, benzene substituent, sorry, is electron withdrawing, and which benzene substituent is electron donating. Um, now, you want to review the benzene chapter for that, but I'll just give you guys a quick hint here. This carbonyl group is electron withdrawing. And this amine group is electron donating. Sorry for the bad handwriting. Um, by the way, I don't know if I mentioned this. I've actually recorded this video a couple of times now. Um, but if you guys have any advice on making YouTube videos or any suggested softwares or programs that I could use to make my videos better, please let me know. You could email me, uh, and, and my email is in the description box below, I guess. Or you can um, contact, figure out a way to contact me. Um, so we have this electron withdrawing group and this electron donating group. And from the benzene chapter, what we will remember, I'll use a different color here. I'll use, how about blue? From the benzene chapter, we remember that the electron donating group puts a slightly positive charge on the ortho and the para positions. Right? And the electron withdrawing group, I'll use red for that, puts a slightly negative charge on the ortho and the para positions. And so that's going to make our jobs a lot more easier now uh, in terms of figuring out which carbon is which. Now I'm just going to look at my numbers again. I'll, I'll use green to assign numbers. So basically carbon 7 is this carbon here. Oh, my bad carbon 7, bad handwriting again, carbon 6 is this carbon here, carbon 5 is here, and carbon 4 is here, right? Now the other thing to notice here is the um, line of symmetry in the benzene molecule, right? So you have a line of symmetry going through here which makes uh, carbon 5, there's two types of, there's two carbon 5s, right? This and this, I'll use yellow and there's two types of carbon-6, right? This carbon, actually, you can't see that. I'll use pink. How about that? Carbon-6 is here, and there's another carbon-6 right over here in my really badly drawn bending. Um, but there's only one type of carbon-4 and one type of carbon-7, right? And that's going to help us a lot, too. So the first thing you want to notice is that there's two very short peaks and two very long peaks, right? And the, uh, that, uh, the height of the peak is proportional to the number of identical carbons, right? So we could say that peak E, sorry, peak E and D is equal to carbon 6 or 5. We haven't determined which one is which. And peak, uh, sorry, I said E and D. I meant, um, yeah, E and D is, is 6 and 5. And B and C is equal to either 4 or 7 because of the heights, right? There's only one type of carbon 4, there's only one type of carbon 7, but there's, uh, so they are assigned to the lower heights, but there's two types of carbon 5 and there's two types of carbon 6, so they're assigned to the uh, higher um, peaks, right? Now we have to figure out which one is more electron, uh, which one is more shielded and which one is less shielded. Well, between carbon 6 and 5, 6 is less shielded because it has that slightly positive charge. 5 is more shielded than 6 because it has that slightly negative charge. So let's go back to black. Um, that's a reference to an ACDC song. Um, and so we'll say E, which is more shielded than D, is going to be given to carbon 5. And D, which is less shielded than E, um, e is going to be given to carbon 6 because carbon 6 has that slightly positive charge. And using the same logic, we will assign um, B and C. So B is less shielded, and so that will be given to carbon 4 because it has that slightly positive charge on it. And um, C is more shielded, so that will be given to carbon 7. And that way, we have assigned each and every carbon to um, a, a, a peak in the spectrum. And so I hope that helped. If you have any questions, if you have any comments, if I've made any mistakes, 
please let me know in the comment section below. If uh, you ha uh, have any questions, you could uh, let me know in the comment section or you could email me. I'll put my emails up. Um, and uh, I guess like and subscribe the uh, video. So thank you.